Last week we looked at the abundance of ticks moving into Oklahoma and Justin, we, we, we think of ticks on humans, but there's a lot of ticks that, that are on livestock too. Yes, that's correct. When we think about uh, ticks on livestock, uh, especially cattle, there's three main ticks we're concerned with. Mm -hmm. uh, first is the Gulf Coast tick that gets on the ears of, of a lot of animals. And then you've got the Lone Star tick. Uh, and also the American dog tick. Out of those three, right now we have a lot of Lone Star and American dog ticks that can be on animals. When you think about those, you don't necessarily see them. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting by the shoot system. If we're gonna think about how we're gonna look for these ticks, usually you have to bring them up into a system like this to figure out how you're gonna even find these. But for cattle in particular, uh, we're certainly concerned with um, the American dog tick mm -hmm. because it's involved with uh, anaplasmosis. And when we think about anaplasmosis, it's a devastating disease that can get into uh, a lot of Oklahoma beef herds. Why American dog tick is involved it's considered a dermocenter tick mm -hmm. and so when you look at that tick it's life cycle it's it's a multi-host tick so it gets on multiple animals and then eventually as it's going through its life cycle it's going to come into contact with a beef animal and so as it comes into contact with a beef animal it's not necessarily do we have a lot do we have a little it's just are, are they infected or not Right. And so in the other issue with the American dog tick, it's what we consider a biological vector. So that means the tick is maintaining that anaplasma bacteria that causes anaplasmosis. And so the tick is, 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 is very essential of maintaining that pathogen. So when a producer is working cattle, they should, they, they, they should not only just look at the ears, but also look at other parts of the cow. Yes, that's correct. Uh, specifically, if they're gonna look for the Lone Star tick or or the American dog tick, they need to look around the jawline, the brisket, and a specific, specifically around the udder region if it's a cow. Uh, if it's a stalker, uh, just kind of get in between the legs, feel. Usually what we can do is we'll feel a tick before we see a tick. Uh -huh. And so get down in there, uh, kind of scrape with your fingers, and as you feel bump, uh, pull it out, and then that usually tells you maybe you do have a tick issue. Uh, but it takes time, uh, so we understand why a lot of producers aren't bringing their animals just to check for ticks. But uh, if they have them up, uh, the areas they certainly need to look for is uh, jawline down through the brisket uh, and, and kind of underneath their legs and, and sometimes uh, around their uh, neck mm -hmm. and as well as under the tail head. If you have uh, tick problems, you know, some of our uh, insecticides that we use uh, for either pour-ons or sprays, we'll, we'll take care of a tick problem. Even some of our, what we call indecticides, so like your products that, in, that control internal parasites will also take care of ticks. Uh, for you know a, a short-term basis for about a three-week period so if you know you have animals that have tick problems bring them up uh, treat them with some kind of either pour on or uh, in some kind of indecticide whether it's injectable or pour on and that will uh, control your ticks fairly well I, I understand it may not be feasible for a large herd but if you notice that you have say two or three animals that are starting to show ticks, is it a good idea to just go ahead and blanket treat the herd? Uh, yeah, ideally, because you're, even though you see the ticks on one or two animals, the, the ticks are a pasture problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you wanna do is probably treat your whole herd because if you just treat those certain individuals, uh, the ticks, again, are gonna get on those untreated animals because they're picking them up out, from, out in the pastures that they're at. This time of year is challenging. We know it's hot. A lot of people don't want to bring their animals up. Uh, but if you see a lot of ticks on your animal, it might be worth your, your while or even your labor cost to bring them up and get some kind of treatment on them. Talk about some of the resources that you have online to, to, to help with that. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to ticks or other external parasites of, of cattle especially, we have a website called livestockbugs.okstate.edu uh, and we have a section that it's kind of it's broken down by ticks, uh, horn flies, stable flies and we have information on there. Uh, the tick uh, section we, we have pictures of the ticks, we have even videos of how to properly treat for ear ticks mm -hmm. on there and then they can, a producer can go on there and find uh, stuff. They, we also have a database on there and it's a link that's it's called Vet Pest X. 
that we did it in conjunction through uh, what we call multi-state group, the multi-state S1060. And essentially uh, what we did with this is developed a database for if a producer has a tick problem on cattle, he can go to that database uh, and look through there and find every available product that he can, uh, that he should apply that's labeled for ticks. Excellent. Thank you, Justin. And for more information, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.